Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today, we are going to introduce you to the greatest drum app that you've never heard of. In the world of apps for our phones, the options are limitless. Metronomes, super sophisticated metronomes, drum machines, tuning apps, drum specific tuning apps. We could go on and on and on. In terms of things that are almost like a more global experience that are really gonna change your entire sound on the kit as well as your personal feel on the kit, what we're gonna do today is gonna outshadow all of those. We are talking about a level like the tool from the workshop. Every iPhone comes with an app called Measure and it has a level in it. There are Android equivalents as well. And the reason why this is such a profound discovery for us is because the angle of everything on the kit has both an experiential effect on what it's like to play those drums and also an extraordinarily large effect on the sound that we get out of them. And our goal today is to show you every way that we use this app to dial in our setup so that as soon as you're done with us today, you can dive in and do it yourself. There are tons of opportunities for this type of information to be super crucial for having a good performance, a good practice session, anything else like that. It's along the same lines as using the sticks that you like to use or using the symbols that you prefer. It's about being comfortable, it's about ease of motion, ergonomics, everything that goes into playing the drums. The very first thing we need to address before we dive into the rest of the kit is actually kind of next to the kit. We wanna know the angle of our legs at rest when we're sitting at the drum throne because everything else that we do is going to be relative to that. Now, we really wanna get out in front of this and say that these numbers, the specific numbers that we are using today are not particularly important for you. This is about discovering your personal ergonomics, how your body works, and how it relates to your drums. Now, despite the fact that we are measuring the angle of the upper leg, what we're actually learning from that angle is the seat height, because if we lower it down, then that angle is going to move closer to zero. And if we raise the seat up, then it will become a steeper angle and we'll get a higher measurement. Beyond just the general comfort of sitting at the kit, this can also dramatically affect how comfortable you are using different sorts of pedal techniques. I know for me, when I first started to learn to play off of the bass drum, I had to change the height of my seat because I was sitting very low and there was compression and tension in my ankle, my knee, and my hip when I tried to utilize that new technique. We're specifically not getting into any angles of the bass drum pedal or parts of the pedal itself. We have talked about that in previous videos. It's a feel thing, it's a personal thing, but we're gonna stick to the drums. However, you should know that when we start to adjust the angle of the bass drum itself, it is going to change the feel of the pedal as we're bringing the batter head closer to the beater and changing the way that those angles interact. Now moving along, we're gonna check out the angle of the bass drum itself. This is adjusted with the legs, essentially. We're tipping the drum toward us or tipping it away from us, depending on how far the legs are extended. And again, we have talked in the past about how changing the angle of the drum itself alters the relationship that it has to the angle of the beater when it impacts the drum. So as you change the angle of the bass drum, you may start to feel like the point of impact in your pedal stroke is different, because it is. And you can balance these things out for feel, which is primarily why I get into adjusting the angle of the bass drum in the first place. Now, right away when we started to do this, we discovered that it was kind of tricky <laughs> to measure the angle of the bass drum without running into other variables that were causing it to be hard to get a consistent measurement. So where we landed was using a pair of sticks, setting them across two of the tuning rods, and using those as a platform to set the phone on so that we could get a consistent measurement of the angle. Thank you. 
Next up, we're gonna bring in the floor tom and the snare drum, and then we're gonna dive into the snare drum first. The snare drum is probably the drum on the kit that is most affected by our technique in terms of like how much we're playing it and all the different sounds that we need to get out of it on a given performance or practice session. I am a pretty much 100% of the time traditional grip player, and that for me means that I have to make some specific choices about the angle and the height also of the snare drum to both limit tension and fatigue in my left arm, give me the opportunity for as much power as I might need depending on the nature of the gig, and also give me the opportunity to move between rim shots and center of the drum strokes without having to really change the angle of attack too much. Depending on the way that you approach the drum and the sort of music that you make, there can be anywhere from slightly to dramatically angled snare drum options for you as a match grip player that you know may look different than what I've chosen here, but that will give you similar access to a lot of dynamics and tones and sounds without having to change how you're hitting too much. Now in the case of the snare drum, I went ahead and played the drum a fair amount and made some adjustments until I felt happy setting the sticks on the drum in a resting position. I didn't feel any tension or any discomfort there. And then we checked out what angle it was. Where the usefulness of these numbers comes in is not so much for me to replicate somebody else's setup or for you to necessarily replicate mine. It has more to do with me being able to replicate my own in situations where maybe I don't have a lot of time or maybe I'm having to set the drums up over and over and over days on end on a, on a tour or something like that and making sure that when I sit down to play, I don't have too much of a micro adjustment that I have to make to be able to play. Now that we know the number that was comfortable for me, we set the drum level and used the leveling app to get back to where it was when I had figured out what was working for me. This is exactly the way that I would use this kind of measurement, whether I was using a shared rehearsal space, using a kit that lives at the venue, if I was setting up a, a new kit of my own for the first time, or if my drums have been put away and I need to set them up again, just having these things in my back pocket so that I can, at the very least, get as close as I could possibly get to what worked for me last time I played. The floor tom is a little bit of an outlier in this scenario because generally when you see kits set up, the floor tom is to the side, it's fairly level, maybe tipped a little bit in one direction or another. This is another one, and I guess it's ultimately going to be all of them, that is influenced a little bit by me being a traditional grip player. That influence is apparent essentially in that I want to have the flattest attack to the drums that I can when I'm moving around the kit. I don't want to be forced into a situation where I have to strike at a very steep angle because there's some sound loss there, there's some tone loss there, and there's also the possibility of damaging the heads prematurely, which we've also talked about in the past and really is something to think about, especially if you're hitting hard, but even, even at medium intensity. In going through measuring my comfortable setup today, I discovered that the floor tom for me is actually level in terms of it being level straight away from me, but then turned about three degrees to my right, which mimics the way that the snare drum is tipped again to my right so that when I move to that drum, I don't have to do anything sort of oblique or uncomfortable with my body in order to get a nice flat reboundy attack on the drum. Now finally, the rack tom is actually the one that I've discovered the most about what I needed to change recently. And it actually occurred on a performance where I was getting through sound check and discovering as I was playing around that my right arm was very comfortable with the placement and my left arm was surprisingly uncomfortable. And I was just in a position where the sound guy asked me to play a bunch of eighth notes on the rack tom and I sort of noticed that it didn't feel very good. And that precipitated realizing that the angle was great for one of my arms and not good for the other one. And I was setting it up based on how I thought it should look instead of the behavior that I was getting out of the drum. Consequently, today I dove into the placement of this drum based on what I learned at that show a few days ago. And looking at it, it still doesn't look right to me. But if I close my eyes and play stuff around the kit, 
all of a sudden, I'm not having tension in my left elbow. I'm not catching the rim with my right arm anymore, like basically ever. And I discovered I frankly was getting a better sound and also had more stamina because I wasn't working around an issue that I frankly didn't even know was there. In the case of the rack tom, we do have another variable. It exists in the floor tom as well, but didn't come into play, and that has to do with the mounting apparatus. We have an angle that the mount is set at that is going to influence the behavior of the drum itself when we start to adjust the drum's angle alone. If you're a player who tends to put your rack tom in a snare basket, the situation will be a little bit different because you're dealing with vertical height from that and then turning the basket and adjusting the angle of the basket. With a mount like this, we have a little more autonomy of the angle of the mount before we get into twisting and turning the drum. So step one is we level the drum with the level and figure out where we need to get the arm to be set to so that when we make an adjustment to the angle of the drum itself, we're gonna be on the correct axis. Once that's happening, we can now make adjustments to the drum. We locked everything down, it's solid, and we're gonna tip the drum toward the player. It's a little bit off of sort of straight axis for me, but when I play it with the grip that I use, it actually feels level for my hands. It's important to note also that this is not information just for professionals. No matter what level you're at, if you're playing the drums and you're learning how to use this instrument, this is extraordinarily valuable information because anything you can do to be more fluid on the kit, to have less resistance, less discomfort, feel less awkward, is only going to benefit you. And whether it's your first day or your 10,000th day, these things can always be better, and it's also fair to say that they will change over time as our bodies change over time, as our tastes and sound change over time. Now, to quickly address the one big thing that we didn't address, we're only talking about angles relative to the player here. We have not gotten into the actual heights of anything other than the height of the seat. This is intentional because that is a separate set of measurements that again, you can use an app for or a tape measure or what have you. Those also influence everything. They're hyper-personal um, and they influence the sound and the feel of everything you do as well. But the super important thing about this particular measurement of dealing with the angles of the drums is that the sound is getting affected by this. The tone that you're making, and that's what we do here, <laughs> talking about sound and tone, it was a shock to me how much that actually changed things, and I would not have realized that had we not taken time to dig into this and discover how much there was there. Now, I know this is a lot of information, but it's important to note that this isn't about just not catching rims or just getting the same setup every time. This is about using this instrument as your voice and having as little hindrance in between you and playing the way you wanna play as you can possibly have. This is delving into the world where you might even talk to a physical therapist or a kinesiologist. Um, there are a lot of people that are professionals at helping people move effectively. There are books about this, it could go on and on. But anything that we can do to just kind of clear the way so we can play how we want and not get hung up on the way, it can only be good for us. And that wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell for new episodes, and please check out our Patreon. Lots of new content on there, symbol series, anecdotes, all the good stuff. And finally, and <laughs> we actually just talked about this extensively, um, we do have a, a specific question for anybody watching if you want to chime in. What do you do in your playing or practicing or recreational life with your drums to get the same setup or the best setup for yourself? Do you have a rug with tape on it marking things out? Do you like memory locks? Are you a zip ties and hose clamps kind of person? Do you not care at all? We would love to know because different things work for different people and this sure worked for us.